Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So I really appreciate Studio One, particularly for its ease of workflow and the efficiency while editing. And there's five key features that you must know, in my opinion, to really ensure that. And if you haven't known these yet, then perhaps you really want to check them out because they can make for a much better experience. So without any further ado, let's get started and check them out. The first feature I want to show you today is called Return Start on Stop. And that's probably the most requested feature or the most asked, frequently asked question by people who are just starting. So what am I talking about here? Well, if you're working in a video editing software, like an NLE as they're called, then you probably are used to the behavior that the playhead cursor, like this transport bar here, this ruler that you start with the space bar, as soon as you hit the spacebar again, that it stops at the playback position where you paused it. It's like a play pause behavior, really. And from there, it will also continue when you hit start again. But that's not really what you want in a DAW, like a music production software, because there it often happens that you have to audition the same section over and over until it's just right. And for that, it would be much more useful if the playhead cursor would always jump back to the original position. And you can set that with a right click here on the transport bar, where you also see the loop icon and things like that. And then you just click on return to start and stop. And when you have this engaged, You'll notice that the playhead cursor will always jump back to the position where you originally hit play, not where you hit stop last. So that is preferred by many, many people, this behavior, including myself, but it's not the default preference. So if you haven't known of this yet, then hopefully it's going to help you out. The next thing I want to show you is for people working with MIDI notes. You probably noticed that in Studio One, if you're working like on a chord progression, such as this one, If you're trying to start the playback in the middle of a long note, then you won't hear anything. Only when you go back to the start point of the note, that's when you're able to hear it. And I'm not sure why this is the default preference, but it's very easy to switch it. So you just head over here to Studio One and Preferences, and you go to the Advanced Settings on the MIDI, and here you should find Chase Long Notes. Make sure that's ticked. I don't really see a downside to this. Hit Apply and OK. And now you can always addition MIDI notes even when you're playing them from the middle section. The next tip I want to show you is particularly useful if you have a lot of split events in your song and you need to just jump back and forth a lot and you don't want to reposition the playhead cursor the entire time. So what am I talking about here? Let's say that I have this event selected on my timeline. Now I also need to reposition my playhead cursor so that it starts at this position. But that's always like an extra click that I have to do. I already made my selection, so it would be great if I could just select and then be able to audition right from there. And that's possible with the following option. It's called Cursor Follows Edit Position and it's located here in the toolbar at the top. You can also assign that to a keyboard shortcut if you wish. And when that's active and you select something, you'll see that the ruler will immediately jump to the beginning of your selection. And in most cases, that is extremely useful, at least in my opinion. So if you're looking for this behavior that you might know from other DAWs also, it's also here in Studio One. Then there's another option that a lot of people miss at first and not realize that it's actually there. Uh, and that is no overlaps when editing events. You see by default, if you're like dragging a selection on top of something else, that's actually going to overlap. And you can see that being indicated by this gray area that just appeared. But most of the time, at least when you're working with electronic music, you would actually like to replace the event that's underneath. So that's why the option no overlap when editing events exists. You find that when you click on this wrench icon here in the track list, and then no overlap when editing events. Just tick that. And when it's ticked, you see that I'm actually now replacing what has been there before. Like, let me just color this orange so you can see it more clearly. Now I'm replacing this section of the previous orange event. And when this preference is not active, then I'm actually just overlapping them, which allows me to build like seamless transitions and hear both at the same time. But in most cases, it's actually preferred, at least by electronic musicians like myself, to work with no overlap when editing events. 
And the fifth and final key feature that you must know to improve your workflow in Studio One is the keyboard shortcut combination of zoom to selection and zoom overview, at least in my opinion. Like for me, there's nothing worse than trying to zoom on your timeline by clicking here and then dragging up and down with your mouse, desperately trying to get that horizontal width just right. And then in the worst case, going down here to try and do the same thing for the vertical height of your tracks, Stop doing that instead just look at the keyboard shortcut zoom to selection probably my most used keyboard shortcut in the entire software and it is shift plus s by default but you should not hesitate to make that something that's even more accessible on your keyboard that's really a rule of thumb that i have the more you need the key the easier it should be to reach on your keyboard and even if that key would be already assigned to another function if you use that function less just override it in my case, I even have zoom to selection on the side button here of my mouse to make it as accessible as possible. But that's just a side note, just to emphasize how much I love this command. And what does it do? Well, it is a selection based zooming. So if I just select my snare event here and I hit this keyboard shortcut zoom to selection, it will be put in perfect horizontal and vertical focus. So I can work on this with great precision. And once I'm done, I can just hit this keyboard shortcut again to go back. Same thing works with a multi selection. So if I have multiple events selected, I can hit the same keyboard shortcut. It's always the same keyboard shortcut to go in and then hit it again to go out. Now, sometimes if I zoom in and I start to edit around a little bit, and I press it again. Now I can't go back to the entire overview of my session anymore. And that's where the second keyboard shortcut comes in. And that is zoom overview. So even if you're zoomed in way too far, like you're all the way gone and you have no idea where your actual session is, zoom overview has always got your back. So to trigger it, you can just go to Studio One and keyboard shortcuts and search zoom overview. And then you should just enter a key for it right here. In my case, I have it assigned to O, but you can choose any other keyboard shortcut that you like. Hit OK after you click the sign. And once you have it, you can always go back to the entirety of your arrangement, no matter how far gone you are in terms of zooming. And it really makes a great pair together with zoom to selection, which is why I have it on adjacent keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcut ergonomics, as I call it, is something I really feel quite passionate about. I mean, check it out. Like I can just make my selection here. I hit zoom to selection. I can make all necessary edits. And once I'm done, you know, shifting the contents around and whatever else I might need to do, I can just hit zoom overview and I'm right back to see the entire context. So hopefully you didn't know all of these key features of Studio One yet that you must know, in my opinion, to have the best workflow experience. Hopefully at least one of them was new to you and brings you some good results. And with that, thank you for watching.